Now I just realized that I actually didn't quite finish off the uh, previous problem. All I've got right now is the probability of us getting a score of greater than 87. But then it says, out of the thousand students, how many of them received test results higher? So we know that 0.115 is the percentage or the proportion of the thousand students. Let's take that 0.115 and multiply it by my 1,000 students. And we'll find then that there were 115 students who scored higher than 87. All right, let's move on then to question number three. Speed checks on a very large number of cars, which is one of the characteristics of a normal distribution as a large sample size, show that the speeds are normally distributed. 10% of cars had speeds more than 132.8. 7% had speeds less than 103.2. We have to draw a normal distribution diagram to illustrate this information, indicating clearly both the percentages and the speeds. All right, so let's draw a normal distribution curve. We know that our mean is 132.8. And then we are going up by, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's not the mean, is it? I haven't got to the mean yet, so let's just get rid of that and uh, start this problem again. Okay, so we've got 10% that are more than 132.8, so this is the 132.8, and let's just... Uh, label speeds of cars in kilometers per hour. So I've got 132.8 and I'll indicate that that percent, that's a 10% region, and then I've got 7% down here, a slightly smaller region, and they are less than 103.2 kilometers per hour. I'll just indicate that that region is 7% in size. All right, moving on. It is established that the mean speed of the cars is 119 kilometers an hour, while the standard deviation of the speeds is 10.7 kilometers per hour. Right, so maybe I should draw that into my diagram. So my mean is 119, and my standard deviations I'm going up by 10.7 and down by 10.7. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit of difficulty fitting it into my diagram, so I'm not going to, but I uh, hope you would draw your diagram even bigger so all of that information was possible to add. We have to calculate the percentage of cars traveling at more than 130. Well, you know what? I am going to draw myself another quick diagram here because it's really helpful to have these diagrams to solve these problems. So my mean is at 119. I'm trying to figure out how many or what percentage of the cars are traveling faster than 130. Now 119 to 130 is not exactly equal to the standard deviation, so we cannot rely on our memorized percentages. This is a time that we will refer to our calculator, and so we'll go into the normal CDF, and we want to have a left or lower bound of 130, and then we're going to go uh, up to infinity. So uh, the biggest number I can put in, you can put in one million if you wanted, but I'm going to put in an even bigger number of one times 10 to the power of 99. That's as close as my calculator can get to an infinitely large value. And we know that the mean is 119, and that the standard deviation is 10.7 we find out that the percentage of cars, so we've got to can express it as a percentage, the calculator gives it to us as a decimal, 0 0.15, and if we round it to two, three significant figures, sorry, it would be 0 0.152, and that's equal to 15.2% when expressed as a decimal. And part C says that the slowest 40% of the cars traveled at a speed less than S. So here's the slowest 40%. Maybe it's even more of them. 
there is about 40%, and they are traveling at a speed that is less than s. I've got to find out what that value of s is. Because they've given us the percentage, now we're going to use inverse norm. So we'll go down to inverse norm. And I can just go ahead and type in 0.4, because I am looking for the region less than. So it's 40% is less than, let's put in 0.4. And once again, we know that the mean is 119, and the standard deviation is 10.7. And we get 116.28. If we round it to three significant figures, then we'd have a speed of 116 kilometers per hour. And so that's going to be your value of S when we round it to three significant figures. And it uh, never hurts to show your work by actually writing down that you did use the inverse normal function with 0 0.4, 119, and 10.7. And the last problem you were assigned is number four. A variable follows a normal distribution with a mean of negative 5 and a standard deviation of 9. I'm going to draw a picture of this. So we've got a mean at negative 5 and a standard deviation of 9. So 9 above that is 4, 9 above that is 13, 9 above that is 22. Going in the other direction, negative 14, negative 23, and negative 32. It says, find the probability that a randomly chosen item from this population has a negative value. So negative means everything less than zero, doesn't it? And so I really need to find the probability or the area of all of this shaded region. And so one way I could do this is by using the uh, calculator. And so I'll say, because I'm looking for a probability, I want to use normal CDF. And this time, my lower bound, my leftmost part of the shaded region, is negative infinity. I can represent this by saying negative 1, second comma, 4 times 10 to the power of 99. So that's the closest my calculator can come to negative infinity. If you want to type in negative a million, it will probably be fine. And then my right bound is 0. My mean is negative 5 and my standard deviation is 9. It will tell me that I've got 0 0.7107. I should round that to three significant figures. And so that gives me approximately 0 0.711. And I guess you could express that as a percentage, although the question doesn't specify how to leave your answer, so IB will accept either one. Part double I. A firm delivers milk to a number of homes in a street. The time taken to complete these deliveries follows a normal distribution with a mean of 10 minutes and a standard deviation of 1.5 minutes. I'm just going to draw a quick diagram of this situation. And so our mean is 10 minutes and our standard deviation is going up by 1.5 each time. And the same in the other direction, increments of 1.5. Okay, it says, what percentage of the days of the year would you expect the milk deliveries to take 10 minutes or less? So 10 minutes or less, we notice that we've ended up shading exactly half of the normal distribution. So straight away, we know that that is 50% of all of the days. Now you could confirm this on the calculator by doing a normal CDF. So I'll do a normal CDF where I'm going from negative infinity up to 10. And then I've got my uh, mean of 10 and my standard deviation of 1.5. And there you go. Don't worry about, this is, a, this is a calculator rounding error. Certainly if we went to 3 sig fig, we'd have 0 0.500 and express as a percentage. You move the decimal twice and you get 50%.